Okay. <laughs> We're live. What's happening? <laughs> Welcome everybody to the second edition of this book club for Being You Changing the World with author Dr. Dane here. Hi. I have to get used to the reversing. If I point this way, it doesn't look it's reverse or oh, something. So right. Dr. Dane here. <laughs> Awesome. So this week, we had a lot of requests for you to talk about money, not just from people on the book club, but kind of always. People. So one, <laughs> one of the chapters in the book is Ask and You Shall Receive. Even money, we added that little bit. Yes. Of. Goodness. Yeah. Wait, I have, to, I have to show this. Okay. My favorite book. I love that. That makes me very happy. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. And hi, everybody. And nice to be with you all. And uh, what a gift. Yeah, so we, we have a cool conversation in store for today. And who knows where we'll go. True story. But <laughs> so one of the, I'll start with something from the book and then we can just kind of go wherever. Uh, you, in the book, you say, oh, and by the way, there's no such thing as a money issue. All money issues are created by what you are unwilling to receive. Yeah. You want to talk about that? <laughs> no. <laughs> nah, I just want to let that one sit in the air. <laughs> and people are like, what? <clears throat> well, it the way I got to that awareness was actually I had started um, Gary Douglas, the founder of Access Consciousness. We we became fast friends as soon as we met each other, and um, so we were up shoveling horseshit one day, and uh, we'd known each other. Uh, I don't know about six months, three months, something in the month range, you know, months. And um, <clears throat> we were up shoveling her shit as you do with a new friend. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said, Gary, will you help me, please? I want to handle my money issue. And he turns to me, he goes, there's no such thing as a money issue. I'm like, Gary, you don't understand. I got a money issue that I want to, I want help with. And he's like, Dane, there's no such thing as a money issue. And I'm like, Gary, you don't understand. I need help with my money issue. And he said, there's no such thing as a money issue. Finally, after the third time I asked a question, I went, what do you mean? And he said, there's no such thing as a money issue. It's only an issue in what you're willing to receive. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, like, what is something you don't like to receive? I'm like, judgment? He's like, yeah, exactly. Are you aware that? And he said, we didn't have this awareness at the time, but um, the, oh, well, let me, sorry. I, by the way, for those of you that don't know, I've got ADD, ADHD, OCD, and autism all rolled into one. Oh, thank you, Marlise. Oh, mm. oh thank you. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> oh, I love the, oh, thank you. I love when people say they love the book. Cause for me, that's like, it's just such an amazing gift to, um, have written this thing and have it out in the world. And, and, um, oh, yay. <laughs> I love I have that. Um, today. <laughs> so for me, it's this amazing gift when people actually receive it because it's like, oh my gosh, that's that's what I wanted, you know, in, in writing it in the first place. Um, so Gary said to me, you don't like receiving judgment. He's like, what do you have to do to not receive judgment? I went, well, push it away, reject it. I said, I either have to push it away and reject it and put up walls in the hopes that they keep it out or I have to make myself small enough so it can't find me. He said, are either of those fun for you? And I was like, oh, no, neither one of those is fun for me. And so one of the awarenesses we had later was um, in this thing about receiving judgment, because we worked with so many people who are don't want to receive judgment. And one of the things we found was if you're willing, and I'll explain this a little bit more, okay? It goes back to this receiving thing. But for every judgment you're willing to receive, you make $5,000 more that year. Okay. What is receiving it? Well, a lot of people think if somebody judges you and goes, you're a jerk, you're selfish. They think receiving it means that you align and agree with it and go, you're right. I'm a jerk. I'm selfish. No, receiving it means, okay, I get that you think I'm a jerk and I'm selfish. And what you do is you lower the walls and barriers. You just let the energy go on through. And then... You're not the effect of it anymore, but you're also not putting up walls and barriers to try to keep things out. And so when for every judgment you're willing to receive and let through, don't align and agree with it. You don't have to make it real. 
you receive $5,000 more that year. For every judgment you reject and fight against, you lose 10,000. Because our ability to fight is really good. Like we're really good at that. We're really good at rejecting things. In fact, one of our greatest capacities for a very long time has been to reject things. But look at it this way. If you put up a wall, see, so, um, sorry, that ADHD thing, one more time. Um, if you put up a wall to keep out judgment, that wall is going to keep everything out. It's just a wall, you know? It doesn't know. Like, if you put a brick wall around your house and you don't put a gate in it where you have veto power on who goes in and goes out, well, the brick wall is keeping everybody out, including people you like, including, you know, the, your party guests. It's like all of that stuff because a wall is just a wall. So when we erect a wall like that, when it's a way of saying, I don't want to receive everything I'm capable of receiving because if you truly got how powerful you were, you would never again be worried about receiving judgment. So, so underneath that, if we go back another layer, the fundamental lie is that judgment is more powerful than we are and that people who judge are more powerful than we are. They're not. It's a lie that we've bought. And so you have the kind, caring people of the world, the people we would call the horse people in the book or the humanoids, as I like to call them, the people that are the seekers of the world, the people that desire something different, the people that desire to create a kinder, more inclusive, more, more gentle, more generative world for everybody, the people that are not out there judging other people, but they think they're judgmental, but the only person they ever judge is themselves because they always think they're wrong. Those people are the ones that, <clears throat> that are so sensitive to other people's judgments and believe that they're real because they're sensitive in general energetically, which is part of their gift. And if instead they recognize that they're energetically sensitive and also energetically powerful, that energetic sensitivity actually is a level of energetic power and potency. So if they got over the lie that judgment was bigger than they are, the possibilities for what they could create are endless. And so one of the things I like to do, and, and this is one of the differences in access consciousness. And if you watch the first, um, the first book club, we talk, I talk about this there too, is for me, one of the greatest gifts is, so we've been talking for a few minutes, we've had this conversation and in the conversation, people are starting to get some awarenesses of things that they've been doing. And so now it's got an energy where you can kind of become aware of, oh, wait a minute. Like a lot of you realize, oh, I made judgment greater than me. Oh, I put up walls and barriers, like all these things. Well, now we can actually change it using this thing called the clearing statement. Can I explain what money creation has to do with judgment? Yes. Um, happy to. We could go on for hours. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big subject, obviously. I'm going to try to keep it to six hours. No, just kidding. We're going to try to keep it to an hour today. We shall see how we go. Um, <clears throat> but... So let's do this. We're going to use something called the clearing statement. And, um, ooh, Em, can you put the website in there? Yep. Theclearingstatement.com. Okay. Um, and it's, I'm going to use this, and it's short form for about 20, no, not 20 pages, um, about 10 pages of material. It takes me about 15 minutes to explain the whole thing, okay? But you can go to theclearingstatement.com. There you go. And you can find it there. It's me explaining it. It's a video, 15, 20 minutes and all kinds of different ways to use it. But basically what this clearing statement is, is for you seekers in the world that have desired a way to change things, this is a major personal development upgrade, okay? I mean, a way of actually changing shit. And let's face it, we've been walking through shit long enough. Let's change the shit okay, and use it as the fertilizer it was intended as so that we can walk through a field of flowers and possibilities instead, okay? And so what we do is we bring up an energy and then I'll use this clearing statement to help you change things, okay? Now, you've got to be willing to change it for it to change. That's how this works, okay? I can't make you change anything you don't want to change, nor would I want to try to make you change anything you don't want to change. I'm not one of those people. Like a lot of people are like, you should change this and you should be this way and you should be that way. You know what? I had so many people do that to me when I was growing up and when I was doing 
self-help and metaphysics and psychology and all these things that I used to do to try to change my life. And everybody had an answer for how I was supposed to be. What we have in access is not an answer for how you're supposed to be. It's a major set of questions, not major, but it's like, it's all about the question. It's like, if I can ask you to find out what's true for you, then you know what you desire to be. And then you can hone that so it really truly works for you and then you can get there. Part of getting there though is undoing the limited points of view that you have that keep you from what you actually desire. Because we have to realize our point of view creates our reality. Reality does not create your point of view. So if your point of view is money is hard and who did you learn that from? Usually mom and dad or best friends or somebody. If your point of view is money is hard or money is difficult, that's the reality you create. So how do we get over some of this stuff? So first, um, everything you've done, mm, actually everything you've done to buy the lie that judgment is greater than you. So you put up walls, so you won't receive judgment, but those walls keep out money. They keep out happiness. They keep out greater possibilities. They keep out love. Um, they keep out true caring, true caring, true kindness. Will you destroy and uncreate all of that, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys, and beyonds. So really quick, the short form for the clearing statement, if you want to use that, is pot and pock or pock and pod. You can say it either way. The POC stands for, which is POC, stands for going back to the point of creation of the thoughts, feelings, and emotions immediately preceding your decision to do whatever you did that's limiting you now. Or the point of destruction of something that you had as a possibility that you destroyed the possibility about. So it like whether it's last week or 100 billion years ago, it goes back to that point where you decided the wall was solid. Because if you look at the wall in the room you're in right now, um, it looks solid. You can't really walk through it, but science tells us it's 99.9999999999% space. Well, if we could go to that point where you decided it was solid and, and decided you were solid too and change that, what are the possibilities you could actually walk right through the wall? Well, with the energetic things of life, that is exactly what is possible and is done by changing our point of view. So this, this whole receiving thing is really about orienting ourselves in such a way as to actually be present for the gifts that are available in the universe around us. Can, can you, so you talk about judgment and there's a the little echo or do you not hear it? Just, maybe just me. Nope, I don't hear an echo. I only hear you in one speaker, but I don't hear an echo. Okay. So I don't know what you got going on there. <laughs> talked about judgment so far and like points of view and most people would say and I see some of the comments but of course I'm asking for money of course I would like more money so why isn't it showing up and have the point well this must not work I'm asking the I'm asking for things why am I not receiving apparently there is echo somebody said okay but now it's gone for me so I don't hear so hopefully they don't hear it anymore it was brief what I man I'm telling you, this has been very interesting technology-wise. Okay. Um, okay, are we over the echo, by the way? Yes, I know it. it's fine now. I have to show this comment if I can catch it. I was convinced I could walk through walls when I was a child. I know! <clears throat> and isn't that funny because people tell us that we can't? And it's like, wait a minute. Um, how do you know? I mean, I think children know way more about what's actually possible. Okay, the echo's gone. Okay, cool. Um, what was the question? I Sorry, that ADHD remember. thing got me. <laughs> we have to remember the question. Well, there's a lot of people are like, of course I'm asking for money. I would love a million dollars or I would love, you know, people are, but why am I not receiving it? Or the universe must not work because it's not showing up yet. I've been asking and you're talking about like judgments points of view, but can you go in a little more of how that actually works? Because they seem not connected and they so are connected. Well, first I have to point out um, for those of you that are highly spiritual and think alcohol is the devil's work. Now that I'm drinking this, um, are you going to keep watching or are you going to go away because I must be less spiritually aware or less conscious 
See, this is the way judgment works. If you've ever been judged by somebody who <clears throat> has points of view about anything, including drinking Corona, um, although it's my antidote to the virus, so I'll stay safe for the rest of my life. Um, see, that's the way judgment works, is if you've ever had people who are like, you're wrong for doing this. And, and most judgments, you have to realize, is that most judgments are energetic. And so we, <laughs> I love it. Where's your lemon for your Corona? We will definitely watch. <laughs> My people, okay? I can't tell you the number of times people have, I mean, there was one lady, I was doing a, a class in Florida, and this one lady, she was like, I, what happened was there was so much change that occurred um, in her and all these people in the class, and she was terrified, right? And um, she was asking about what was going on and wanted to know if I was of the light because so much was changing for her. And it was all stuff she'd been asking to change. And the next day I walked in and I had black pants and a black shirt on, very nice outfit. And she looked and she said, I knew that he was of the dark because he was wearing black pants and black shirt. And I was like, wow. And this lady made her significance the source of her life. And so I'm bringing these things up because anything that we judge, we create a limitation on. So for example, if we're ever judging anybody, if we judge anyone or anything else, it's only because we've been there and done that. Well, when we judge, we separate from whatever we're judging, okay? That's one. So if you have a judgment, for example, if you have a judgment of people who wear a certain color, I know that sounds ridiculous, right? But I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to take it out of a le you know more intense realms, okay? But you can see the stupidity in that. But let's say you have a judgment of people who wear purple. And you, um, so you have a judgment of people who wear purple. So when people who wear purple are around, you're kind of like, oh, oh my God. Like those people are less. Those people don't know as much or whatever it is. That Get that energy. So when Becky said, can you talk more about those being energetic? Think of the energy that comes up. Think of one thing you judge or a person that you judge. Or maybe better yet, think of a person that judges you. Uh, you're like, I'm related to all of them. Should I still think about them? <laughs> yes. Okay. Think of somebody who judges you. And what's it like being around them? You notice how it feels? It's like this. But that's what people use judgment for is to create this, is to create separation from people or from things. But people also use judgment to make themselves right and make other people wrong. And they also use judgment to make concepts wrong. And But what we've already talked about is the judgment that we have of someone or something else as the seeker that you are, you tend to make yourself so wrong for having that that you believe you're not worthy of receiving, okay? That's one thing. And then the and then trying to keep out the judgments that other people have of us, we put up these energetic walls around us that keep us from receiving. So let's do this, okay? Um, I'm going to try this energetically. Okay, so, hmm. So here's what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to think of something that something or someone that you resist something or someone that you put the walls up to okay just think of that person a lot of us have at least one person in our life where we're like ah oh, they're calling oh man don't answer you know whatever they're ringing on the doorbell run right in the back run right out the back door okay <laughs> um or somebody who has a lot of judgment of you and what we're conditioned to do is when that person comes anywhere near what we think is our personal space, we put up the walls and barriers. Now, what I'm gonna ask you to do is I'm gonna ask you to imagine them there outside of your personal space. Notice them coming toward you or their judgment coming toward you. And notice how even at the thought of them, as soon as I said their name, if you really went there, you kind of went, ah, put up the walls and barriers. So notice as they're walking toward your space, you see them across a field, okay? And your space is out however it is. 
And normally what happens is you put up this massive wall. So as they're walking toward the massive wall, you've already got up to try to keep them out. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to have a little internal conversation with you that goes something like, okay, so wherever you decided that this person is more powerful than you because they judge or because they hate or because they have anger and wherever you decided they're more powerful than you because they have decided they're right and you are wrong and you can't ever be right enough to get them to not judge you, will you destroy and uncreate all the lies and all the truths with lies attached? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyonds. Goodness, that's got a lot of energy. <laughs> okay, now this there's there's a lot to this particular topic, of course. Okay, but I'm trying to I'm trying to do this thing that that allows you to have a couple exercises you can do so you can change it in the moment. Okay. So now that you've had this little conversation with you and we've used this clearing statement to change at least some parts of the points of view where you have the idea that you need these walls and barriers to protect you, you want to ask yourself, do I really need walls and barriers for protection or is there something else I could do? Okay. And you want to ask yourself, would an infinite being truly require protection? So, Everywhere you bought that an infinite being would truly require protection and everything you've been doing to protect you with walls and barriers rather than by being as big as you are and can be, will you destroy and uncreate it, please? Yeah. Right, wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Okay. So with that, if you recognize that now, okay, Oh, and um, all the other lifetimes you've had with this person and all the other lifetimes you've had with their judgment and avoiding their judgment and every lifetime in which you, who killed, how many lifetimes have you killed them? How many lifetimes have they killed you? And whose turn is it to kill the other one? Your turn to kill them or their turn to kill you? Everything that allows that to exist and all the stuff from the past that keeps us in place, will you just run and create all that, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyonds. Okay, so now hopefully we can do our little exercise. <laughs> um, it's easier to do the exercise once you change some of the underlying points of view that are limitations. So now you see this person approaching with all their anger, their judgment, and all that stuff. Or for some of you, clearing what you just cleared, maybe they're approaching and you're like, where did all their anger and judgment and stuff go? I'm not nearly as terrified of them anymore. Okay. So see them approaching, however they are, and I'm going to say again, for a lot of you, probably they've got less of that shit going on. And instead of believing you need to put up the walls and barriers, what I would like you to do is lower the walls and barriers, push them down, but do it from total power, total potency. Like I am going to be the infinite being I am. And I see you and I see all this stuff that I made real. I'm not doing that shit anymore. Done with that. Thank you very much. You can't get me to choose against me anymore. And I realize that putting up walls and barriers is keeping out everything that's wonderful. And it doesn't do a very good job of keeping out somebody's energy of judgment, by the way. It's really funny because no matter how many walls and barriers you put up, now you're the one behind the walls, but you can still perceive their judgments. So this thing that we've been doing about putting up walls and barriers is one of the dumbest things we've ever done. <laughs> and it's what keeps receiving from occurring because it's based on, and it's based like we talked about on the lie that we are tiny in comparison to judgment and mean people. And in actuality, yay, I can feel my whole relationship with this person melting. Awesome. That is actually the possibility here and it can happen that fast. So let it, okay. There's one of the things I love about access. The change can happen so friggin' fast. You can't even begin to imagine. Okay. So, which is really cool. Um, I like it. I made two people angry. Yay! I don't know what they were angry about. All I all I see is their little red angry face. <laughs> You're welcome. No extra charge for that. Oh, usually, it, usually it you know doesn't take this long. Anyway, um, so 
if you'll notice, so here they come walking across this big old field and I know they've been walking for a long time, so they're getting tired already anyway, because I've been talking so long and you're kind of getting tired. Like, okay, dude, I'm bored. I'm over this thing. Why? You know why? Because you don't have to do the shit anymore. Okay. You don't have to do it anymore. Now you can be, they can be, and you're like, oh, I realize it. You've got judgments. Okay, fine. That's the place of true receiving. But anyway, we're going to still walk through the exercise. So here they come. Lower the walls and barriers from the awareness that you are an infinite being. And would an infinite being truly need protection from walls and barriers? Or would they just be as infinite as they actually are? Cool. Now I'm getting what vulnerability is. Awesome. That is the other part of this. See, vulnerability, people tell us that vulnerability is weakness. No, vulnerability is our true power. It's only when we're vulnerable that we have access to our true power. Vulnerable is where you have no walls and no barriers because you know you don't need them, okay? They don't protect you. They never have. They let in everything that you don't want and keep it bouncing around in your head. Whereas when you don't have any walls and barriers, you get let in the kindness to carry all the awesome stuff and it doesn't bounce around. All the yucky stuff doesn't bounce around in your head anymore. So one more time, see that person out there, lower the walls and barriers and notice that as they come towards your personal space, whatever that is for you, people think they have a personal space. My personal space is, um, oh, the size of the universe, okay? So I don't really get this thing about being able to put a wall around myself, but I understand that that's what people do a lot, okay? But so as they come to whatever this thing is called your personal space, you can sort of sense it moving, sense that personal space, whatever that bubble of energy is around you, and make it like 20, 40, 50, 100, 100 meters out, okay? Or maybe like, okay, 20 meters out, something like that. So this person comes towards your personal space, you lower the walls and barriers, as they get in and all their, as their stuff, you know, which is probably mostly changed already, but as it comes in and they have all that stuff, notice how the movement of your energetic field without keeping them out anymore starts melting everything. Now, we already did that. I already walked you through it energetically before ever saying the words. And the other thing we need to get is we're highly energetic beings. And this is part of the gift of receiving is that we're highly energetic and we highly have, and we, and we have some massively, um, massively brilliant energetic skills and energetic awarenesses. And if we acknowledge that, then we realize that our level of receiving, whereas somebody else can be um, with somebody judging and pick it up and it'll feel like a one on the volume dial. For us, it feels like a hundred. Well, what if guys, girls, peoples, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, um, what if the time has come for that to actually be a gift that creates more for you of everything you desire, including money? And, and we've also got to get over the significance around money for that to happen. Because the idea, we make money so significant and anything you make significant, you push back beyond some wall or barrier where you can't get it because you solidify it. But what if our energetic awareness being that intense is actually a potency rather than a weakness. Yes, we were more intense at receiving judgment and picking up people's sadness and picking up where people are stuck and picking up where they're unhappy and picking up where their body hurts. We're very more intense with that. But what if what could come with that is a lot more receiving of all of the energies that would also allow us to create a lot of money, okay? And actually have a sense of wealth. I love it. This is changing it, cool. Awesome. That's why I do this stuff. Okay. That's why I wrote the book, but that's why I wanted to do the book club also. And, and when I came to access 20 years ago, I was so amazed because things I had tried to change for 20 years were finally actually changing. And sometimes in minutes like this, and I was like, this is fun. And this, I also want to bring to the world. I want people to know this is possible. And um, once you go beyond the, the reference point and the need for suffering, then the possibility for thriving can then, um, you can embrace it in your world and go for it. 
can you there's been so much gratitude for energetic and i'm sorry <laughs> But can you say more about like, or give us a few more of those, like this reality when it comes to money is about working hard or putting in more hours, or I give you this, so I must get this in return. And what you're talking about is something completely beyond this reality and like receiving as it in money and everything, like you said, not with money significant, but do you want to go in some more at the energetic magic of how that shows up when you're not doing the work hard and the, this reality of what we think money and yeah well i mean everybody look for just a moment pardon me i have this comfort thing i'm sitting on that is no longer comfortable <laughs> um so if you look for just a moment at have you ever had something that shows up as if by magic where you ask and boom I mean, we all have. Okay, so one of the things I'd like you to do is write down three times where you have created that. All right, start with one. If you can do one, then do two. And if you can do two, then do three. Okay, what one thing did I ask that showed up as if by magic? Now, for some of you, it might be a relationship, for example. Some of you, it might be somebody to have sex with. Some of you, it might be an item that somebody gave you or clothing or a car or a house or a place to live. And... I'd like you to just get that for a moment. Just one thing that you asked and you received and it just showed up as if by magic. That is your capacity with everything if you would allow it. Now, everything that brought up when I said that, because you're like, yeah, I know it's supposed to be, but it's not, Dr. Dane. You don't understand. Oh, I understand, okay? I grew up and my family was so poor when the toilet broke. We had to wait, and I was living in the ghetto, okay, with um, eight other people in a, I think it was a two or three bedroom, I think it was a three bedroom house, okay? Um, I understand. So don't give me that shit about your upbringing determines the fact that you can't create money and you can't do this. That is you telling yourself a victim story and buying the fucking story. And if you're truly going to change your financial reality and your reality of happiness and your reality of your life, you've got to get over the idea that the story of your life determines the future of your life. Everything that is times a gazillion, we destroy and create a place. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and guns. And yes, I got a little bit intense. Why? I'm doing that for you, not against you. And if you don't get it right now, um, hopefully one day you will. And I know if you don't get it right now and you're like, you don't understand, but I grew up poor. So did I. You don't understand because people have fought against me because of my color. So did I. Okay. People fought against me because of my color and my sex. Okay. Now, I'm not saying I understand the, the totality of your story. Okay. I have not walked a mile in your shoes, but nor have you walked a mile in mine. And I'm bringing this up because it's so central to the idea of receiving because we are the only ones who can stop ourselves from receiving. But we do that by holding on to, for example, a story that it's, and, and it's, and look at this for a moment. So many of us have things that we have gone through that we want to be validated for. We want to be acknowledged for, but really we want to be validated. And there are two different things, and I don't think I'm going to go into that right now. But we want to be validated and have somebody say, look, I see that you have suffered. But we also, and why would we do that? Because we know that's not the way the world should fucking be. We know that's not the way our life should have been in these ways. We know we should have been treated with kindness. We know, even though we keep thinking we're wrong and bad, we know that inherently we're not. We know that inherently we desire much greater for people. And there's some idea in the world that when you're nicer, you know, and you care for people, that w the way it should work is you, the golden rule, which is you treat them well, they treat you well. But what we've seen is the people who treat others the nicest are the ones who are abused the most. And so we're walking around in this state of confusion where really, if I could take you by the shoulder, take you by the hand, look in your eyes and put my hand on your shoulder and go, look, I got your back. And I just want to acknowledge, I get that you have suffered. And I get that. And, and for some of you, you're like, yeah, but I wasn't abused, so I didn't suffer. 
Yeah, but growing up in a reality of judgment, in a reality where you're made wrong and you can perceive it and feel it in your body and in your head and other people can't. That's like a constant state of abuse. And you're not wrong. That's part of your energetic awareness. And what I'm trying to get you to is where we start using that energetic awareness for you instead of against you. So allow me to take a moment with you and acknowledge you. Acknowledge the experience and the experiences you have had. Acknowledge the story that you have been telling yourself. But truly to acknowledge, can you leave that up? Because I would like to read that. And But truly to acknowledge, okay, yes, I have had some painful shit go on. And yes, I have been holding on to this story because I wanted somebody to get it and really get me. And yes, I thought this thing determined me and determined my future, determined my sense of possibilities and defined me. But let's look at this for a moment. If you are still putting one foot in front of the other, looking for different possibilities, did that fucking story truly define you and limit you? Or is it something that you are making the choice to go beyond? Because we hold on to the story as though it's a validation of us. In actuality, the fact that you are no longer living it, and if you're somebody who experienced meanness, judgment, and abuse, and are no longer perpetrating it on others, you are stopping that friggin' story right now, and you are creating a different world. Everything that doesn't allow you to perceive, no be, and receive that, and actually have that choice, and recognize the brilliance of the beauty, of the gift, of the difference, and the dynamic future of possibilities that creates. Will you destroy and uncreate it, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyond. So by the way, my hands wiggle when I do those clearing processes, okay? And so believe me, I get it. I held onto a victim story for a really long time. And the more I let it go, the more freedom I got. The more I let it go, the more I was willing to receive from everybody and not continuously think I was going to be hurt or abused again because I experienced a lot of physical and emotional abuse and abuse of my very being when I was a kid, like growing up until 20 years old, until I moved out of the house and went to college, I experienced this. So I get it. And you get abused because of two things, because number one, you are a convenient target. You're there. Number two, you are the most powerful target around and the person who's abusing has a sense of total powerlessness. So if they can get power over you, who they somehow energetically know has power, then they can feel powerful too. Everything that is, time's a gazillion and it's time to end the cycle kids so we can actually receive. So we can create a world based on receiving impossibilities and your voice matters your energetic voice. You don't have to yell and shout. It's the energetic voice, the energetic space that you be that matters and creates a totally different possibility. So everything that doesn't lie to perceive, no be and receive it, will you just run and create it, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shirts, I just, <laughs> oh, Alexander said, I was able to change my story of the poor impotent victim, single mom of five after the ESB last year in Charleston. Thank you. Oh, that's awesome. So look at that, guys. Somebody with a real-time, real-life story. The ESB is Energetic Synthesis of Being. It's a class that I facilitate based on this, quote-unquote, energy being work that I started um, 20 years ago. And what's interesting is the Being You Change in the World book is based on transcripts from Energetic Synthesis of Being classes from the past. So here it comes, full circle. Um, but for somebody to be able to get that, it's like, I get really intense when I get really intense because it's like, for me, um, when you have the possibility to go beyond the limited story, but you don't know it and you've been, been living it for so long, um, and I know you can do this. Sometimes I get really intense and it's, it's basically uh, partially it's my way of having your back. Okay. And at the same time, it's my way of waking you up and going, guys, time to change this. 
And now is the time. Now is the time. There's lots of gratitude for you being intense, by the way. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> oh, um, wow. Wow. Thank and thank you for all of this. Um, do you want to talk a little bit? I, I don't know where you want to go after that. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, and, um, but when we've been talking so much about these energies that people can change, like your victim story and all that. Oh, I know. <laughs> Being you class saved my marriage and very probably my husband's life. So whatever you do, don't take one. <laughs> 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 oh, we have one coming up. Yay. In July. Okay. I know that, you know, these videos will live for a long time. So somebody's going to go July, what year? We're not going to tell you, but, um, it rhymes with Corona. Maybe it doesn't, but sounded good. <laughs> Get the idea. For that website, because it would have the class coming up. Oh, yeah. No matter when you watch the video. True story. <laughs> oh, that's such a gift. Thank you. That was awesome. But what I was going to ask you is, you, you like talk about in the book the energy of infinite receiving. And you have this example of people in Sweden when it's the first day of spring and it's freezing and they're like go outside with their coffee and so happy to be in the sun like oh my gosh i'm alive and how that is the energy of infinite receiving can you say more because yeah. that's not a linear you know but i love that example yeah. true so. story well it's funny because truly the first time i went to sweden it was amazing because you'd climb into an elevator and nobody will look at anybody else okay the most interesting thing in sweden is the elevator floor and so then i go outside <laughs> And it's the first day of spring, the first day of sun and light that they have had. It is literally zero degrees Celsius, which means 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And people are outside in their coats wrapped up, you know, see their breath and they're drinking espressos and they feel so alive. And it was like, oh my goodness, it was like spring. I mean, it was just, it was so, there's, there are few things like being in a Northern Scandinavian country I guess they're all Northern, you get the idea. Um, but being in a Scandinavian country when the first day of spring hits, because they're willing to go out and do anything to be outside to enjoy the rays of the sun. And that is an element of total receiving if you tap into that energy and the happiness that's in their bodies and the happiness that's in their faces. And they're all talking and blah, 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 you know, just like crazy with so much a sense of being alive. And I was like, my people, uh, these are my people right here, you know, because people in the United States are like, it's too cold to go outside. Don't you have anything inside? You know, and um, no matter, but we also don't have, you know, three months of total dark or mostly, you know, dark and twilight. So it's, it's a little different perspective, but it just really opened my eyes to what true receiving actually could be. But if you look at that, also the thing we've been talking about, a lot of people have judgments of the cold. Well, if you've ever been around somebody who has judgments of the cold, you know they tend to get colder than people who don't have judgments of the cold. Why? Because your point of view creates your reality. And we could choose the thing. This is the thing is we have choice over what our point of view is. That is the one thing in our own life that we can change. One thing in our own life we can change is our point of view. It's the one thing we have control over. The weird part is, and nobody ever tells us this, and this we'll get to, we should have probably talked about in Free Will Universe, but we'll get to it at some other point a little more in depth, is our point of view creates how people show up for us too. Our point of view also creates the people that we choose in our lives. Our point of view creates the job or the money-making possibilities we will choose and whether they will work out or not. All of these things are created by our point of view. And we keep thinking our points of view are only in our head and only affect us in our head. Our points of view affect our entire reality and how our reality shows up. And our judgments are basically distilled right and wrong points of view. So for example, um, you know, well, actually, I don't even need to go into the example. I said enough to fry people's brains so they can start looking at that on their own. <laughs> I 
I wanted to put up one more comment. Oh, good. Yep. Okay. It's such a sad, hard upbringing, and you've made everything possible for me in the last year. It got me past things today. I never thought I could with love now. Yes! Awesome! Thank you. And that's also a bit of my intensity, okay? I'm like a big six-year-old. I just, it's like, if it's there, I show it. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And fuck yes. And what else is possible now? You know, it's like this, this world, guys, is a truly, I mean, look at this planet. If you, there's a show called How the Universe Works that I have personally been watching a lot of. And on one of the things, on one there, they search for another Earth. Um, this planet, having us with water and life and living and all the stuff that it has is a very unique gem in the galaxy, okay? And there may be others, you know, they're really far away and all that, but we got to realize that this place is unique and truly beautiful. There's a reality around us that we have been living that my sense is we have changed tracks on dynamically, meaning that we have changed from where we were before Corona, and now there's a whole different reality available. And so I'm acknowledging that because if you've noticed it also, there are parts of it that seem like things are getting more heavy and more intense, but right beyond it is more magic and more possibilities. And it comes down to, once again, your point of view creates your reality. And like they said in the movie Tomorrowland, which wolf are you going to feed? The wolf of despair and separation and destruction or the wolf of possibilities, hope and future. And you want to ask yourself, which wolf am I feeding today? Which wolf am I feeding with this point of view? Which wolf am I feeding by reading this? Which wolf am I feeding by watching this? Because what you're looking at in that is what points of view am I choosing? Because the points of view that you take and live as are basically a lot of them are created and supported by who and what you surround yourself with. Surround yourself with those things that actually support the points of view you would like to have to create the life, the living, and the future you would like to create. Whether that's movies, whether that's people, um, you know, entertainment, what you search on the internet, all that sort of stuff. And since I said that about searching on the internet, I know a lot of you went to your judgment of porn. You don't have to judge it, okay? Just like enjoy it. If you're going to do it, you might as well enjoy it. Stop judging it. It's not bad. It's not wrong as long as two people are consenting. Okay? So everything that brought up, right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pot, call nine, choice, boys, you know. I'm talking to my fellow perverts out there. You know, get a bad rap sometimes. It's not your fault. Can I ask you something? So you it's have- It's not about porn, is it? It's not about porn. It's not Okay, about you porn. can ask. <laughs> It is, you have often said like being you is the greatest, most intense adventure that goes on and on forever. And yep. do, you me, do you want me to pause while you read that? <laughs> well, I just saw that part. You changed my life with just a two hour intro. And then, and this is the part, okay. Then I just kept choosing from what I got that night and life keeps getting greater. You're a gift to my life in the universe. And, and I, I didn't, uh, well, I'm very, this for me, I kept choosing. This is the thing we got to get, guys. So many of us are, we've been in conditioned to believe that we need to go to somebody who's going to change everything for us. Uh-uh. Nobody is going to be with you enough of your life to keep changing things for you. But I got this and I kept choosing. Take what you get from these lives. I've got over 400 videos on YouTube and a ton on Facebook, on my personal page and the and, and a ton of Facebook lives that I've done. I mean, a ton of stuff. Um, the, just so much stuff. And that's just me. There's lots of other access consciousness facilitators out there. If you need help and money seems like it's an issue, take that stuff and start using it. Take these lives and use what you get. Listen to them over and over because there's an energy that is there that will open up in your world more and more and more. And you'll notice, you'll listen the second time, you'll be like, did they say that the first time? And then the third time and the fourth, and then the 10th time you'll hear something and you're like, I've listened to this 10 times. I never heard that before. Well, it's because what happens is you can hear more, the more your fixed points of view go away, the more we pock and pod stuff too, but the more you choose, the more you can receive. And the more you use this stuff, the more you can receive this stuff. Sorry, you were in the middle of something. I really apologize. 
I remember. It's good. Woo <laughs> and it, it it's about it can tie that in because what I was going to ask is you talk about being you, right? Being this wonderful adventure. And I have heard you say in order, if you are willing to be it, you can receive it. If you're willing to choose your choice to be it, you can receive it. Do you want to talk more about that with money and everything though? Yeah. So if, would you be kind enough to you to be whatever you had to be in order to wake up in a life in a world that you absolutely loved? Just ask yourself that question for a moment. And if so, what would you have to be willing to be in order to have that? And, and let's look, okay, so let me give you a moment, just another moment with that. And I don't give you too many moments because you're so fast, you get it as soon as I say it. You then try to figure it out and define it and all that, but I'm not interested in the definition. I'm interested in the energy that came up when I asked. What would you have to be willing to be in order to have that and in order to live that? Now, so you get that and you're like, whoa, I w have to be, okay, it's a like a space. I'd have to be like a, an energy, like a space, an energy, an, an ease, okay? Um, I would say there's there's this other thing we have in access we call the mantra, which is all of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. Now, the recommendation for years has been do it 10 times in the morning and 10 times in the evening. My suggestion is do it 100 times a day at least. All of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. Um what that is, is where everything shows up with ease. All the changes you're asking for, the money, the friendship, the relationships, whatever it is, the change in living situation, the freedom from worry about Corona, all that sort of stuff shows up with ease, joy, and glory. So that's one of the things that you can do as a way of actualizing that. All of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory, 100 times a day at least, okay? Or 10 in the morning and 10 at the night if you want to, okay? But then also ask yourself, okay, so what else in addition to that, or if I, if you be that, you got it, okay, everything works. But in addition to that, what else would I have to be willing to be? And you think about it for a moment, and let, like let's say you're, it's about the money situation because that's a big thing with receiving for people, right? Um, and you think, what would I have to be willing to be? And then you go, oh, wait a minute. I'd have to be willing to be somebody who didn't suffer with money and didn't suffer for money. Okay, wow, how do I get there? Well, how many of the points of view about suffering with money and suffering for money and that money is hard did I buy from my mom before the age of two even and then afterwards? And how many of those did I buy from my dad before the age of two? And how many of those did I buy from my brothers and my sisters and my friends and my aunts and my uncles and my grandparents? Holy cow, and my entire family before the age of two. Everything that is, right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pot, call nine, shorts, boys, and beyonds. And in that, you start to realize another vital awareness, which is 98% of your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, and your points of view are things you picked up or bought from other people. 98%. Most of them were not original to you, but now you're living it. And let me give you a litmus test. If something is actually your point of view and is actually true for you, it will make you lighter. If it's not, it will make you heavier. So part of what you would have to be willing to do and be is you. Not everybody else's stuff. Well, how do you get there? Well, we have a tool called Who Does This Belong To? And Pock and Pod when I bought this is mine when it wasn't. Pock and Pod everything I created and uncreated and destroyed as a result. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pot, call nine, shorts, boys, and beyonds. <clears throat> okay? So, and I'll read that in just a minute. So if you recognize that, then you start to realize that everything that you've been doing that hasn't made your life lighter is something that you've been doing that is not really of your choosing, if you will, it is your choosing. You choose to do it. You choose to buy it, but it wasn't from here 
that that point of view that that needed to be reality got created. Because what's true for you makes you lighter. If we would orient ourselves and choose only that which is true for us, we would start to live a life of lightness and money comes to those who have lightness. And I've got to make the distinction on that money comes to those who are lightness. And because as the humanoid you are, as the seeker you are, you're different than other people. The people on the planet that are not growth oriented like you are impossibility oriented, I like to call them humans, okay? The normal people, quote unquote. Um, the people where you say, hey, I got, I, I'm got, i doing this new thing. I found this new thing that might change everything. And they're like, nah, that's not the way we do it. And they always tell you you're wrong and you're weird because you do all that weird shit. Why do you believe in that weird shit? Those are the humans, okay? The humanoids are you guys who are in the constant state of judgment of you thinking you're wrong, wanting to make people happy. And the person you always judge yourself the most for not changing is the human that doesn't want to change. So instead acknowledge there are certain people who do desire to change. They're the humanoids and you can't understand why you wouldn't want to change. And then the humans don't understand why you would want to change because uh, number one, global warming isn't real and true. Number two, um, God will save me when I go to heaven. And number three, um, there are lots of things that are right and lots of things that are wrong in the world. And you're one of the wrong things. Everything that is times a gazillion and all the judgments you have of you, from all the people who thought you were too weird because you know of a reality bigger than what they know is possible. Will you destroy and create it, please? Right, wrong, good and bad, bottom, pot, call nine, shorts, boys, beyonds. And that's what it ends up boiling down to is you know of a reality that is possible that they don't. And you have been trying to make human reality, typical reality, real for you. But if you're truly going to have the lightness that's possible, the money that's possible, the joy that's possible, the ease that's possible, you're going to have to start choosing for the magic of you and be willing to receive that you are different, realize that is not wrong, realize that is a gift to us, all of us, and a gift to the planet, and probably the reason you came here, and probably the reason the planet really likes the fact that you're here, start tapping into that magic, start getting happier, and recognize that you can't do anything just for the money, okay? Everything that brought up, times a godzillion, will you destroy and uncreate it, please? Yeah. Ryan, wrong, good and bad, pot and pot, call nine, shorts, boys, beyonds. And this ties into the comment down there too, okay? As a humanoid, you can't do anything just for the money. There are lots of people that can, okay? The United States currently has a president that can do things just for money and just for the power that he'll get and whatever. And whatever you think about him is whatever you think about him. I don't care. Your political views mean nothing to me other than they're your point of view, okay? Have your point of view. That is irrelevant. But you, you realize that there are people like that. And then you, as the humanoid, keep thinking you don't get money. You don't understand money because you can't do it that way. Like you can't, you know, stab somebody for a nickel. That's just not your reality. You can't walk over somebody's head to get a nickel, not your reality. So realize that your reality is not wrong, but you have to orient yourself to your reality, which is a reality of possibilities and magic, and inclusion, and happiness, and ask and you shall receive, not a reality of judgment, a reality well beyond judgment, and you've been believing judgment is more powerful than you, which it's not. So part of, so what is required is you choosing the superpower called happiness, okay? And what Amanda commented, I love what you said a while ago, Dane, about happiness being your top priority always. And if you're not happy, you'll move mountains until you are again. Exactly. That's part of it. So for me, from the time I was a little kid, they would say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I'd be like, happy. They'd be like, yes, Dane, but do you want to be a doctor? Do you want to be an actor? Do you want to be a garbage man? Yes, as long as I'm happy. It's the only thing I have ever cared about. When I can't, and I was going to kill myself 20 plus years ago when it came to access because I had been unhappy for almost three years. And I was done. And I was a seeker like you guys are. If you're watching this, let's face it, you're a seeker. And even those of you who are sitting there judging some of the things I'm saying, you're probably still seekers too. Now, if you're just sitting there like this, like, ah, you fucking asshole, then you're probably not one of those seekers. This probably was not a good place for you to spend the last hour. <laughs> but thanks for trying it out. I'm grateful you were here. <laughs> but in that recognition, 
I had tried all kinds of things to change my life. Weekend workshops, reading books. I was reading five books at a time. I go to weekend workshops all the time and think I finally found the answer. And by Wednesday of the following week, the universe caved in on my head again. And it was after being unhappy for three years, thinking I'd finally found the answer yet again and having it disappear in three days that I went, universe, I'm done. Either my life changes or I'm out of here. That's when I came across Access Consciousness. I got my bars run, which was my first experience of access. It literally, I went in there depressed and suicidal and I came out grateful to be alive and thinking if it feels like this to be alive, I'm in. I'm actually happy for the first time in three years. Let's do this thing. And so, um, ooh, yay, thank you for putting that up there. That's where you find the bars. And quite literally, it did that for me. Now, I'm not saying it does that for everybody. What we say is, at the worst, you'll feel like you had a good massage. At the best, your whole life will change. Um, my whole life changed, but it made me realize that that long elusive dream of happiness was truly available. So when I got access tools, what would happen is, I would process through something. So I, I was happy and then something would come up and I'd sort of get unhappy or cranky or whatever. And then I would start asking questions and using access consciousness tools. We have a ton of these tools. We shared several with you and processes, right? There's a ton more. If you're really interested in a step-by-step -step program for consciousness, um, I highly suggest checking out the classes, okay? You follow that, you know. Um, being your change in the world is a really good one. Anyway, I know I just had to make that. I'm sorry, just had to, I just had to, here we are. Um, but we have so many amazing classes by so many amazing facilitators, I, truly, and I really do mean this. Um, and you get tools and you get change. And so I started on this journey and I started getting happier and happier and happier. And then there were times where I'd be like, ah! And then what I would do is I would go through my manuals and all the notes that I had taken and I'd just look for what sort of caught my eye and I would do it. Sometimes it was asking, who does this belong to? Um, sometimes it was, you know, running a process or something and it would change. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, this changed it. I tried all the other stuff I, and it wouldn't change mostly anything. And it started changing and my life started changing dramatically. With a very sh within a very short amount of time, I got over the majority of my victim story that I had been telling myself forever that was keeping me in a place where I had to continuously be unhappy to prove that my story was correct, okay? And this is, once again, the thing about the story. And the reason I'm bringing up the thing about the story is because if you ask yourself, what would I have to be in order to create this? You realize that you'd have to be something that isn't congruent with your victim story anymore. In other words, you'd have to be this thing called you because a victim story is always a lie because you are not a victim. You are somebody who experienced something, but if it did not kill you and you have stopped the cycle, you are not a victim. You are the antidote to that shit. Everything that is, right, wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shirts, boys and beyonds. Leslie said, I ran bars for a young man who has Asperger's and was suicidal. Two sessions, and he said he didn't need any anymore. He felt fine again. Yes, that. Okay, so um, I just, I, I wanted to bring up all of that and and comment on all of that because, you know, and you notice how it all ties together. You know, we started, this whole thing has been about receiving. We talked about judgment and the walls of judgment. And to such a dynamic degree, that victim story that we've been telling ourselves. Because if you are creating a life and it doesn't have everything you as a being desire, well, the first part is you go, oh, well, I don't really desire that. I'll, I'll settle for what I have. But then at a certain point, your being knows there's more possible. And that's when you get that ache of dissatisfaction. I like to call it the ache of being a dissatisfied dreamer. And it's that ache of dissatisfaction that spurs you to look for something different because you as a being know, okay? Nobody knows more than you about you and about your life. I don't know more about you than you do. Nobody should be telling you what they know about you. And if I ever say something, it will be asking you a question. Other than saying these things in a general way, you can take whatever part you want but nobody knows more about you than you do. And if you start to acknowledge that and access that knowing, it becomes infinite what you can create and what you can choose. Everything that doesn't allow you to perceive, know, be, and receive that. 
right and wrong, good and bad, bad and pock, all nine, shorts, boys, and meons. And I say again, so we have the judgments, the walls, the barriers, all these things that keep out receiving. Well, our story is basically the sum total of the judgments and the rightness and the wrongness and the way reality works that we have solidified as a fixed point of view of what reality is. And if you're going to have that ease, that joy, that glory, you're going to have the, the life and living that you truly could have that is as magical as you know it should be, can be, and could be, going beyond having to live that story is going to be a dynamic part of it. And you can. And the tools are available. When are you going to use them? Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, my dear. And for all of you guys, we are on again on Monday for the third uh, installment of this one. And I think on Monday we're taking on relationships. <laughs> Woo! And uh, people in the chat are ask, also asking about translation. These are being translated with just after we do them. So if you go to drdanehere.com forward slash BY book club, um, you can find out more and then find the language pages as well. Ah, yes. Oh, thanks so much, Jane. Since I'm in access, I think I start to live my life, which I never experienced as live and live before. Oh, that's awesome. I feel like a baby exploring every day. How'd I get so lucky? Yay. <laughs> that's awesome. A baby dragon. And um, that's so cool. And thank you for that. And um, also, by the way, just so you know, your English is great. Okay. Because I know how I would be like if I were German or something and I'm typing and I'm trying to type in German, I know. And I talk with so many people around the world in different languages who who can speak the language, but they want a translator because they're embarrassed to do it. I just want you to know your English was great. OK, and um, so grateful for that comment also. And wow, what that hopefully um, and just check in, y'all. Do you feel any different than when you got on this? Um, when you started watching this. Um, and that's just an acknowledgement of how the energy can shift and change. Last thing I'm going to say is, as far as um, what I've noticed in using access consciousness tools and doing the classes and all this sort of stuff, used to be that my life was kind of like, and really down, like I had major downs. What I've noticed with access is it goes up and it's just sort of like keeps going up, but you'll still have downs, but they won't be down here. Like they, you go down and before you like go down, you're like, oh, you find a way to change it. And then next time it just gets up higher. Okay. And it keeps going. So it's not about I'm perfect and happy all the time or any of us are or any of us can be. It's like if you're continuing to grow, you're going to have ups and downs, but the downs don't have to get you nearly as down as they used to. And the ups, there is truly no limit. And I've been doing this for almost 21 years now. Okay, let's say 20 years now. There is truly no limit. So um, come play. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you Miss Emily. Again. Thanks, everybody. Bye. See you all next week or in the next video if you're watching, you know, like 2042 or whatever after Corona has been eradicated from the world. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> and yeah.